Hi, I'm Paul Hopkinson. Now let me show you some clips from my main watercolour video on how to paint an American bald eagle. Let's get started. And I'm going to start adding this in by scumbling, in other words, using the side of the brush. Remember, this needs to be fairly dark in the background, so I'm going to make it quite rich in places. But I'm going to come down to probably about here. And I'm thinking about like a circle, not, not a pure circle, but like an oval, really, for the kind of shape I'm after. And a bit more around there. I want it to blend out, remember. And there we go. So all we need to do now, just tidy up in places where it's kind of run down and let it dry. Leave it flat somewhere to dry. And once it's nice and dry, we'll come back to that. Take off the masking fluid and we will then get the outline drawn on to the bird itself. Okay, so there we go. I quite like that. And just kind of pick out some areas, outline using a little bit of burnt umber, uh, in this case around the face, probably a little bit of bluey black, very, very pale though, just to sink and seal in these pencil marks a little bit, just so we don't lose them when we start putting watercolour washes over the top. Okay, so that's our next step. Remember, this is going to dry quite a bit lighter as well, probably 20 percent lighter. Depends on how wet it is. Sometimes if it's really watery, it will dry that little bit lighter again. So we need to let this dry. We'll give it a blast with a hairdryer, whichever way you want to do it. Once it's nice and dry, we can then start to think about adding a few more details within there. And I do this because I don't want it too harsh, I don't want it too sharp on these details because I want them to blend that little bit in places. And I'm going to barely touch that white just a little bit just to add that in. And if it's still too bright, we can again tone it down even further so there's a lot you can do with this. And the good thing is as well is that if I wanted it to blend out, I can just use a damp clean brush and blend that out so it's not quite as sharp. Now I'm going to go into the burnt umber with a little bit of lamp black in it. So burnt umber and lamp black. I don't want to touch in just using the edge of the brush. See how kind of raggedy my brush looks at the moment because it's nearly dry. That's why there's hardly any paint on it. And all I want to do is just kind of create like a little I've also noticed as well, just by the beak here, coming out this way, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to put a bit of watercolour white in there, dragging the brush over the paper. Now this is nearly dry. Let's make use of it. So we've got a little bit of a kind of light spot going on. And then around the very edge of here, I want to tap this time around there. It's not a solid white line. Just tap in. We're looking at that shape again. I know I keep saying it, but it's so important. It really is. Just re wet that area. It's dried off too quick. Or over that, I missed it earlier. Probably missed it. Don't tell anybody that. Try and keep a nice free hand. You find as well, if you hold your brush further along, it's a bit freer. I like to have a bit more control by holding the brush further down towards the metal ferrule. So how do you hold your brush? You know, let me know. Put a little comment below. Quite interested in finding out. Actually, be quite quite interested how people hold their brushes. But I like to hold it as I say lower down so I can control it more, and allow this water to soak into the paper. Okay, I do load the brush up, and you can hear me tapping the water off on the side of my water pot. That's what I'm doing, so it's not too loaded. Plenty on it, but it's not going to drip onto the paper. Yeah, I did it louder then. <laughs> so working my way down, still wet you see, so it's staying wet long enough now. And down to about here. I'm saying that's drying down this way now. That's fine. So I'm going to wash the brush out, dampen this down, just about there. Let's just soften this back a little bit now. I don't want to go too much as I say into this area just yet, because I want to start picking those details out, because we can see more of that within the uh, photograph. So I'm just going to soften this edge out first. It's making sure that these lines are slightly jagged, so we've got a jagged edge. Okay, did anybody think I'd make jagged then for a minute when I said No, okay. Well, I know I did. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we're working our way down here and down the side. 
All right. Now, one thing I haven't done, not enough, I know I put some lines in here. I'm going to put a few of these darker lines in there. And then we've got to think about where some of these marks go. So I've got to look at some of the shapes. Which I've not got them all drawn in. So we've got an area there. Because what I want to do is show you some of these and then we'll just go to a little bit of music while I do the rest because it's all the same as I say. Um, another one there. And looking back and forward at the photograph constantly. Just here again, we've got to remember this is a very dark area regardless. It's only these little highlights on the edge of the feathers that are standing out. So we need to look at those and just think about sort of replicating and give a, a feeling of the same kind of impression really is what we're doing here. If you want to copy them, um, every single one individually, that's your choice. Because what we're going to be doing here is just pulling out some details bit by bit. I mean, that's a beauty about dark. Somebody asked me some time ago, just kind of changing slightly, uh, is how do you paint black? How do you paint white? Well, that's what we're doing today, both. This is not quite black, it's like a very dark brown, but it's not far from. So all I want to do now, really, is pick out some of these details again. Using this darker mix now. Just don't do them all, just do a few of them here and there, so, it, so that means it will vary. So leave a few lighter ones in there. But just add in, every now and then, a slightly darker mark. So now we can actually add a few details in around the body. Not too many, remember it's quite dark down here though. Just a few little lines here and there, that's so all I'm trying to do. I might put one there, just to suggest this particular feather. Just a few strikes in there. If you overdo it, don't worry, not a problem. You can just add a little bit more paint over the top, or just blend it in afterwards. So let's just do one here. So you now see the benefit for all these layers of put underneath here, that they have the layers of detail, which now still shows through, but yet you've got the realistic feel of the top of the head. And that's how that works. So anywhere, as I say, that needs to be brighter, just brighten those areas down. So we'll keep popping that photo in for you so you can just compare and see what it looks like compared to the photo itself. And what I'm looking at when I look at the photo. And that is how we'll approach doing the feathers all the way along now, the, ba the base of this. Right, so that's the white area just about done. We can always fine tune it. All we need to add in before we think about anything down here, we don't need a lot down there now, that's nearly done, is a little bit of colour. So, and that's around, just drawing my brush off, that's around this area here. So there you go, that's how to paint an American Bald Eagle in watercolour. And this is nearly three hours of watercolour tuition, which you can watch online or even download. So come and join me and let's paint this very majestic looking bald eagle together. And let's get the brushes wet. So if you feel this is something just for you, come and join my members on Patreon and gain access to lots of exclusive content and all of that catalogue of information and videos that you can have a go at painting straight away. Hopefully I'll see you there. Bye for now.